This is a Cisco Meraki Z1 uh, router, and it has the NAND flash here. It also has the JTAG, but for some reason, we just cannot easily get the JTAG working. So what we found is uh, we have done this in the SPI, and can we do this program the chip, uh, read the chip while it's on board? And I found this product. It's called the, the clip. And what it does is it can clip this on, and can have an adapter here and connect it here. So while we solder this pins on it, and then we can connect to some uh, programmer or a CPU to it. So this is my prototype of setup here, which has a microcontroller here and running the U-Link uh, USB JTAG NT software on it. And currently I hardwired this, and this is the adapter and with this clip on. So I can click this on, click this on, like so. Okay, uh, it needs carefully click on, but it's quite reliable. And then we can power on the router and read it. So I'm going to sh go to my, uh, computer and show you how to use the Unink NT software to read it. Uh, this is just a prototype, so I'm thinking of making a product, something like this, to read the NAND flash. But I also want to see if there's any interest to doing so. Now this is the special clip we need to purchase, and it's not cheap, it's quite expensive, it's about $50 US just for, for this kind of adapter. This is a demonstration of using the raw NAND flash read ISP mode to read the Meraki Z1 NAND flash. So uh, it's not, it's using it directly uh, ISP mode to read the flash on the board without go through the JTAG. Uh, typically when we have the JTAG, we probably get a read speed about 150 kilobyte, uh, around 150 kilobyte per second. But if we directly read from the board, it can achieve much faster. So here's a demonstration, let's say detect and we detect the flash here. Uh, just show you how the config was done. And it's not using the, the EG tag, it's using TSOP NAND, which is a new type. Uh, the software has not been released yet. So it's not 1.10, it it's probably 1.11 or so. So let's do this again, I detect, and we can read the entire flash this way. So here you can see some data is read, read out and I have read several times already, and I noticed the NDA is di different. Like this could be a little NDN, but re read ins from the, or, um, the original address this way, but the ending swap needs to be done. Uh, I can show you later on what I mean. So this is like SPIM, which should be MIPS here, it's kernel one, and the loader here. So recovery is another one, which is also uh, MIPS. So the idea of using this new concept is we have so many targets that has the uh, NAND flash or, or, or something that's very difficult to implement uh, either the limitation of the JTAG itself or some unknown protocol, unknown CPU, because the CPU we just don't support it. And we have found a way this is called intrusive uh, programming, which is the chip is on the board, we trying to disable the CPU for whatever reason, ISP, whatever, and being able to hook up all the data bus out to the CPU we're using. So currently on the NAND flash, we hook about 20, you know, 20 some lines, you know, 20 some lines of uh, buses to the CPU, and then we issue command and read it. The speed limit now is, is limited by the chip I select and the, the bandwidth I always use is only USB 1.0 which is the is reasonable for routers and some uh, like TVs. You know, if TVs are, are using NAND, they are not that kind of big, like maybe one gigabit or two gigabits. That's reasonable because taking the time to desolder and solder back, and it will take a lot of time and, and sometimes you can damage the chip itself. Um, Making it super fast is not necessarily needed because the wires we use and high clock speed can introduce some interference as well. I have another technical challenge is the NAND flash by nature itself sometimes has bit errors. 
So each sector can have several bits error, and we want to see if we can fix those things. If not, then the data need to be read several times and to do some uh, afterwards fixing. Um, okay, so this is the data we read, and if I sh I will show you how to end swap. There is a command called end swap, and let's say uh, kernel one. And look at this is what it's supposed to look. If you have the original firmware, it looks like this, and that's how it works. But if you read the wrong ending, then this is how it, it looks like. But anyway, this is a proof of concept. I want some feedback, see if this is a feasible product people would like to use.